This video is going to be the video that every plant influencer is going to kick me for because it's the truth when it comes to gardening. The geek crew will confirm that down below, very likely, by all the things I'm going to say are massive misconceptions about gardening and very far from the truth. If you're into being a garden heretic, then welcome. We accept you. I have three. I have more than three, but we're gonna start off with three because we need to make this digestible for everyone that may be wondering. So number one is that once you master a plant, every single year thereafter, that plant's going to do absolutely fabulously. And there's never a reason why you should backtrack on the success of that plant. No, absolutely not. That actually doesn't even make sense. As gardeners, we're taking plants from all ends of the earth and putting them into one single climate that they do not naturally occur in. And because of that, some years you're going to have conditions that are best for that plant. So this year, where I am, it's cold, it's rainy, and it's overcast. So my kales, my cabbage, my broccoli, my cauliflower popping off, doing wonderful but my lettuce doing great. But things like tomatoes, peppers, okras, even some herbs, not, not as well. They're not doing as well. And that is because the conditions that they're in is not, not perfect. Now, you will find some years that you have just tomato bus and nothing works out for you. You will have years where beets fail entirely, peas fail entirely. So, just because you think you've successfully achieved greatness when it comes to tomatoes does not mean next year is going to translate into that. And it also doesn't mean that you're a bad gardener. It just means that the conditions that your plants are in have changed compared to that of last year, which is completely normal. Now, can you mitigate this slightly? Yes, you can. Number one way to mitigate this is through, obviously, climate control, so a greenhouse of some sort. Not all of us are rich, especially not in this economy. So option number two is actually to seed save. So for any plants grown in your area, you see save seeds from those. And then those seeds, in theory, are more conditioned to your climate and kind of what's been going on in your climate. So tomatoes that thrive and thrive and are giving you nice big tomatoes, lots of fruit off of that plant, that is the plant you would select the tomatoes from and then obviously save the seeds for. And that is because it does well in your environment. So that is one way obviously to get things and capitalize on whatever your climate may be. And if you have wild fluctuations in your climate, so last year we were hot and dry this year, this year we're cold and wet, um, the soil reserve is still a little bit low, but overall it's, it's a little bit more moisture, particularly in the gardening space, you may wanna mark the, the bags, say, cold, wet year, and these were wonderful tomatoes, hot, dry year, and these were wonderful tomatoes, and then it gives you a little bit of better idea as to what you need to start based on maybe what, you know, the farmer's almanac or whatever you choose to look at. You can also, to be perfectly honest, you could most definitely just grow a buttload of whatever you're low on. So when I say this, tomatoes, last year was an okay tomato year, a lot less than what I normally have. However, the year before that was like tomato insanity. There's just tomato after tomato after tomato. So I still had some frozen from last year. And those I used for stewing tomatoes and pasta sauce and salsa from the year previous. And then the ones from last year are still technically there in my freezer and I haven't canned them. I haven't done anything with them yet. So if this year pans out to continue to be cold, overcast, and very moist, I'm not going to have a great tomato year. I'm going to have a lot of foliage. I'm not going to have a lot of flowers and I'll be okay because I have stockpiled stuff from previous years when things did go well. So rather than composting it or garbaging it or throwing it away, you may choose to freeze it because you never know when your bunk year is gonna start. And fortunately this year is the year I think for tomatoes and peppers where I am anyways. 
to absolutely fail. Okay, so next one is pests and disease. We make videos all the time about how to eliminate disease, how to eliminate powdery mildew, how to eliminate thrips and mealybugs and you name it. So we talk about all ways to eliminate these things fully. We make videos on it because those videos make us money, <laughs> but the truth is you will never, ever, ever in a million years reduce or get rid of every single disease, every single pest, and that includes weeds. So the reality is when we're dealing with garden pests, we want to mitigate it, meaning we want to reduce its intensity, if you will, but fully eliminating is an absolute pipe dream. It will never ever happen regardless of what you're using. Even if you use chemical pesticides, it's not going to work because, and this is because even on a, a, an agricultural production scale, the goal isn't total elimination. It is just mitigation. The idea is if we can keep the damage under 30%, then our plants will thrive and survive still. So if you have a pesticide, organic or otherwise, and you apply it and it keeps the damage under that 30% mark, then technically you have succeeded. So don't kick yourself if you're still seeing cucumber beetles, despite the fact that you put a whole bunch of effort into getting rid of them. The idea is only mitigation, not total elimination. And I understand where that would not, you wouldn't love that as a gardener because it's, things don't look as pretty when you have aphids or things don't look as pretty when you have, you know, powdery mildew, all of them, all over them. And I get that, but you will never beat, you will never win with mother nature. Unfortunately, that is something called the nature tax. And the nature tax is to let the ecosystems do what ecosystems do, regardless of what you're trying to do to stop them. So that is number two on major misconceptions. Okay, so the, the last misconception, and this misconception technically has like multiple parts to it, and that is that gardening is cheaper than buying it from a grocery store. That is a lie. There's no freaking way. The only way I would ever agree with that would be if you have a large plot of land, you're able to till said large plot of land, you're allowed to let mother nature do the work of watering it, fertilizing it, etc., and so forth, and you're doing really basic vegetables. So nothing that can be started inside and everything that could be direct sown. So potatoes, beans, beets, carrots, sunflowers, that sort of thing, fine. I will give you that it is cheaper to do that on a large scale than it is in a home garden. But this garden, my little mini micro homestead, absolutely not, it is not cheaper. And this is coming from someone. I reuse, like I've got salt lick tubs for cattle that my husband got me, kind of, I have tomatoes in there so that's like a reusable container but these raised beds are expensive and five gallon pail buckets those cost money starting seeds indoors cost money and I don't know you guys can comment down below but I'm going to a lot of the stores right now walking around and everything's like 50% off for seeds seedling starts and I just think to myself that is way cheaper than having to buy the grow lights buy the trays buy the soil buy the seeds care for them all the energy for lighting and heating and all that fun stuff that goes into it if you have a greenhouse setting that up purchasing that like you can see how the costs will stack over time if it's something that you're committing to as like a lifetime hobby then sure like you could technically use the idea that it's going to be able to sustain itself you know for 20 30 years fine you could probably say that the greenhouse ends up being cheaper or the produce ends up being cheaper but overall it's not now what it is and i will give every gardener that it is much much tastier and you know exactly what went into it and how it came to be so knowing where your food comes from knowing the effort it takes for your food to do what it does and then obviously the flavors are all ideal. I do still think there are fruits and vegetables out there where it is much cheaper just to purchase them. There are a few where 
like peppers, jalapeno peppers, for example, if you do them in containers and you do the overwintering video that I did and you overwinter them every year so you have more of like a, a pepper tree at this point, that I would say actually is quite a bit cheaper because you know, jalapenos where I am aren't you know particularly cheap. You could maybe argue that, um, but the vast majority, I would say no. And if you have any geek crew that you would say, no, absolutely, this is cheaper to grow than it is to get from the grocery store, pop those down below. But there's none that I can say with like absolute certainty. Zucchini, I guess, zucchini would be one. Um, but yeah, when you think of the labor, the time, the effort, the utilities, all that sort of stuff that goes into it, a lot of these either are more expensive or do break it even. Now with that being said, if you factored in your health and the fact that it's getting you outside, getting you moving, you can maybe argue that it's cheaper because long run you'll be healthier. Cause I swear to God, my grandma, the reason why she was so mobile and so healthy for so long was because she gardened. And I think that that kept her going. So you can maybe argue that it's a long-term investment that pays off towards the end. Now, if you're looking for a way to reduce the cost of gardening and actually make it slightly closer to breaking even or better than that of the produce at the garden, at the grocery, at the garden store, at the grocery store, then you're gonna wanna check out this video here on gravity watering because I'm using water from all this rain we're getting and a very cheap method to water my garden it literally costs next to nothing so check that out and this video down here is what Google says you need to watch based on what you've been looking for they say it's going to be helpful it's creepy but apparently it's helpful and I will talk to you guys next time bye